So in our study, we were able to use a natural language processing algorithm, a type of text-based artificial intelligence to identify people in a large real world um, database, an electronic health record, who have a silent or asymptomatic condition called uh, covert cerebrovascular disease, or in this case, there are two variants, silent brain infarcts and white matter disease. And we were able to try and assess what the risk factors are for these conditions. So my name is um, Lester Lung. I am a stroke neurologist and an assistant professor of neurology at Tufts Medical Center in Boston. And our study is called Risk Factors for Silent Brain Infarcts and White Matter Disease in a Real-World Cohort Identified by Natural Language Processing. This will be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. So in our study, we aimed to assess the frequency of two types of covert cerebrovascular diseases, silent brain infarcts and white matter disease, um, as well as their associations with traditional stroke risk factors in a real world population. The way we did this is that we previously developed a natural language processing algorithm, a type of text-based artificial intelligence that could um, crawl through an electronic health record or another large data set to identify people who otherwise don't have ICD codes or reasons for visit or some other means to identify this particular, particular condition. So these, um, this algorithm was looking at the uh, neuroimaging reports in terms of the text of those reports um, written by radiologists. So it was an observational study of older adults aged greater than 50, uh, greater than or equal to 50 at the Kaiser Permanente Southern California healthcare system um, over a 10 year period between 2009 and 2019. And these are people who had either a head CT or a brain MRI that was done for some other reason than either stroke symptoms or concern for stroke. And we looked to see um, what types of risk factors might be associated with those. So the algorithm um, during that period of time was able to identify um, over 260,000 individuals of which about 5% or 13,000 had silent brain infarcts and about 70,000 or um, almost 30% had white matter disease. And again, these are incidentally discovered without any protocol-driven neuroimaging, such as in a uh, post of cohort study. Um, we also looked at the stroke risk factors, which were highly prevalent in this population. And we found that the strongest risk factor, of course, was age. With each decade of life, the risk of having a silent brain infarct or white matter disease or both um, rose with, uh, uh, in a monotonic fashion. We also found that uh, traditional stroke risk factors did have some associations as well, like atrial fibrillation, hypertension, um, diabetes, tobacco use were all uh, modestly associated with an increased risk of these conditions. Um, and we also found too that there's a, um, an interesting difference between the two types of neuroimaging of uh, which um, head CTs, which accounted for about 75% of the neuroimages um, uh, and MRIs, which were 25%, the latter was associated with a reduced risk of having silent brain infarcts identified, but an increased risk of having white matter disease identified, likely related to the sensitivity um, of these imaging uh, of that imaging modality. So what we know from prospective cohort studies like the Framingham Heart Study, the Cardiovascular Health Study, and others is that these um, quote unquote covert cerebrovascular diseases or silent cerebrovascular diseases are um, are risk factors or are independently associated with an increased risk of symptomatic stroke or dementia in the future. And so the hope is that we can try and find some way of identifying these conditions in, um, in real world populations of patients. But the challenge is that um, the biomarker or the means of detecting them are neuroimaging studies, which are quite expensive. And so um, what we sought to do is try and figure out if there's a pragmatic way to identify people with this condition. And, and that's what generated the idea of using a natural language processing algorithm to look at routine neuroimaging reports. So with this study um, demonstrating that we can identify um, people with these conditions, the hope is that we can, uh, this can eventually be a tool that helps to facilitate um, interventional studies like clinical trials and observational studies, um, but also be a means to identify people in real world practice. We now know from prospective cohort studies, um, as well as from other studies um, drawn from um, this research that followed this particular study, that these incidentally discovered silent brain infarcts do confer a risk of symptomatic stroke, which is a disabling disease, as well as 
dementia, which again is, is a dis disabling disease. And so um, what we hope is that uh, these particular conditions, which thus far don't have strong guideline recommendations for prevention or for screening um, and identification, um, can be a target for prevention measures to prevent stroke as well as cognitive decline in the future. So um, this particular study uh, has shown or demonstrated that use of this tool, the natural language processing algorithm, is practical and feasible for identifying people with these conditions. And a subsequent study um, funded by the uh, NIH grants um, that funded this research also showed that um, these incidentally discovered um, vascular brain types of vascular brain injury also are associated with future risk of stroke and dementia, comparable to those seen in prospective cohort studies. So what this means in terms of next steps for research is that we hope that um, this can build a platform for clinical trials and comparative effectiveness studies where we can start um, looking for the best means for identifying patients that can um, be uh, the target of prevention interventions, as well as um, study those interventions that may be able to prevent future stroke and dementia. So in conclusion, um, what we were able to show is that a natural language processing algorithm is able to identify people in a real world cohort in an electronic health record system who have these conditions um, and who otherwise would not necessarily come to medical attention or have this identified by clinicians. And again, we, we identified some risk factors which are pretty consistent with what have been shown in prospective cohort studies. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter more information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.